Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black on Black Cinema. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. And Tiara. Hey. All right, guys, we're back. This is episode 199, Monster. This is a review of Monster. It is on Netflix. Uh, you can check it out there. Um, so if you're looking to watch the movie, go to Netflix. Um, this is directed by Anthony uh, Mandler. Um, screenplay by Rada Blank. That's important. We'll get back to that in a second. Um, and based on the book Monster by Walter Dean Myers and starring Kelvin Harris Jr., uh, Tim Blake Nelson, uh, Aesop Rocky, John David Washington, Jennifer Hudson, and of course, Jeffrey Wright. Um, the logline for this is Monster tells the story of Steve, Steve Harmon, played by Kelvin Harrison Jr., a 17-year-old honor student whose world comes crashing down around him when he is charged with felony murder. The film follows his dramatic journey – from a smart, likable film student from Harlem attending an elite high school through a complex legal battle that could leave him spending the rest of his life in prison. Um, I'll go first. Um, I hadn't obviously hadn't seen this. Um, look, I knew Kelvin Harrison Jr. from the movie Loose, L-U-C-E. Um, I, I recommend that, by the way. Uh, I think people should check it out. Ironically, the story is not like – it's obviously divergent in a lot of ways, but like the core of it, like the core of the character is wildly similar to the movie loose uh, incidentally. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it. I actually liked it a lot. I thought it was quite, quite good. Um, I thought there was some, uh, I, I thought Kelvin Harrison jr. Again, put in a great performance like he did in loose. Um, that guy is going places and I, I'd like to see him sort of branch out and do some other stuff, but, but I really liked him a lot in this. Um, I like a good like courtroom drama, so I, I kind of dug that, um, and I like it sort of the way it's told, sort of this like back and forth in and outside of the courtroom, and him being a film student as as the way to sort of tell the story, um, like in an observer kind of way uh, to his own story, which was which was fascinating. So overall, I, yeah, I really dug it. I thought it was quite good. Uh, Tiara, yeah. I really enjoyed it too. Um, I thought the the contrast in colors was interesting between um, the courtroom and then sort of like the other parts. Of, I can't remember what was his name, Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve yeah. Harmon. Yeah. yeah, between Steve's lives. Um, I didn't I didn't know anything about Kelvin Harrison Jr. before this film. Um, thought he did pretty well. Um, I really don't have anything bad to say about this movie. I don't think the storyline is necessarily unique or anything like that, but um, <clears throat> still pretty good ex- execution at the end of the day. Yeah. Enjoyed okay. it. I would think I would give like a four out of five. Okay. You mentioned the storyline not being unique and that's really, really sad. Um, this yeah. book came out, this book came out in 1999. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it feels like something that could be uh, in any, uh, it feels like it could come out in any point in the contemporary uh, time period, uh, which is scary, uh, yeah. particularly for me, uh, because me and my, my wife was in tears after watching this mm-hmm. of, of thinking about possibilities. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think the film was good. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't know it was going to be more of a legal drama. Um, which I was pleasantly surprised to see. I, I don't mm-hmm. mind a legal drama, especially if I'm watching with my wife, who is uh, a lawyer by trade. And um, yeah, it just got me thinking about, you know, all the different, uh, all the different um, themes that the movie touches on, you know, uh, aside from like the obvious, right? Like right. race and, 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 you know, how, how we, are depicted in society, but also like <clears throat> themes of like peer pressure. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that's something that, um, that, that people don't realize, especially as we get older, because we're, we are like away from all that. Cause we don't, we don't give a damn, but like when you're young, like you want people right. to like you and you want them to like you a lot. And you, you know, it, it, and and you you might end up doing things that um, or getting involved with people, 
and it just i don't know it 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 spoke to me and um yeah i i i dug it i i i thought the uh the the framing of um the of the main character like r- describing his own screenplay uh, of his life mm-hmm. was uh was interesting and um i i enjoyed it it was it was good okay there you go yeah. um yeah i mean there you know there are many sections in the movie where you you kind of feel like especially when you're first watching it you're like like at least for me i was I, the first thing i thought was this is my nightmare right is like i remember growing up like this is my nightmare of being accused of something and then having to like face the justice system you know like just as a as a young black man like that's a terrifying scenario and then like ending up in jail even if it was for a short amount of time while the trial is going on like i'm not built for that shit like right at all um i like fancy cheese and wine like i'm not built for jail <laughs> So true. Yeah, like, look, <laughs> toilet, toilet wine does not appeal to me, um, amongst many other things. So, like, that was that was like my initial thought. Like, wow, that's really scary. And then, of course, the second like they show his parents, my my thought changes to this is my new nightmare, which is something like this happening to my kid, and right. and, and like things have not changed enough. Like, what'd you say? This was, this was written in the nineties, right? So like this could have been written in the eighties. It could have been written in the seventies. It could have been written in the forties. Like it, it's not that different. Um, sort of fundamentally of, of how, like it used to be how black men were seen, but the reality is like black women are thrown into this too. Right. So it's not like, well, I've got a girl. So it, it you know, like this is a, it is a different scenario that, no, no, it, it really isn't actually at this point. So um, obviously black men are still um, very hard. Uh, black men are very hard targets for the you know American justice system, but it's not just them, you know, um, as far as black people go. So, yeah, I just I, I thought it was just quite a powerful story. Like I, I just did. Mm-hmm. And I like that they kept they kept you right on the edge of your seat to the end. Right. They never let you they never let you like. Here's the real answer to what's going to happen where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like when we did like without mer- or um, was it um, without mercy, right? Or just mercy, excuse me. Yeah, just mercy. Um, yeah. You knew without that Jamie Foxx. Yeah, without mercy is the Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> That's the other Michael B. Jordan movie. Um, just mercy where, you know, you knew that Jamie Foxx's character was innocent. Right. So you're just watching it play out as they're finding evidence to prove that innocence in this you are going along. You are you are where his parents you are, are. You are a member of the jury. Yes, right. Like yeah. you are you are learning this information in real time, and they're just showing you like snippets of it, snippets of it, snippets of it, and just like as it's being explained to the jury. So like I did feel like I could feel my heart in my throat at the end. Like I'm yeah. as invested as somebody making this decision. And actually, by the end, you're more in the position where his parents are, right? Because right. You don't, you know, you were learning it as it was going on as well. And you're waiting to see if your kid or the, this character you've invested in, right, in this, you know, hour and a half or whatever is going to be found innocent or guilty. And you don't know, right? So I thought that was a powerful way of telling that story because it's normally told, here's the ending. Let's, you know, let's wind through the story and and see what happens at the end, right? Um, but not knowing that was powerful. Yeah, they um, they do a very good job of keeping you as the audience member what like like a half a step in front of the jury and as the film goes on you see more uh um flashbacks you get more and more to uh information to kind of help you make a decision a decision but right. i i like the idea of um not giving you the whole story up front, making you feel like you're a member of the jury, because I wonder how many people would, if they're being honest, um, see this kid as the monster that, uh, that, that uh, the DA calls him in the courtroom, right? Like how many of you have a preconceived notion, right? Like that DA yeah, he, he had a preconceived notion, right? Yeah. He looks the part to me. Oh, 
right? Yeah, you're black and you're here. That's enough. That's his yeah, lore. Right. But uh, I wonder if people are being honest with themselves. You know, and I don't think people would be, right? Look, I'll be honest. This is, this There's a couple of times I was like, did you or didn't right. you? I didn't know, dude. Like, and I get it. Like, and may, look, part of that is not because he's black and he's young and he's being accused of this. Part of it is like, because I watched the other movie you were in and you were kind of a shady nigga in that movie. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. I was like, because mm. it wasn't, you weren't exactly clean in that. And I'm like, is that a similar role? Like, you know, you can't help it. Like those kind of things seep into your head. So I couldn't, I couldn't honestly be like, he's 100% innocent. I was like, I honestly don't know. That's what, that's why it worked. Cause there were moments I was like, oh shit, he is. And it was like, and then he did this. I'm like, oh, that's not good. I mean, but, but even then, like, I mean, I think at the end of the movie, even though you get the verdict, there's still like a little part before then when you actually get to the the day of the robbery where he does something and it, and it made me go like, well, did he actually go along with it? Because you know how he did the thing mm-hmm. at the light. Yeah, I was like, I was like, ooh, I was like, I don't know if if that was supposed to be left up to interpretation by the audience so that the audience can determine, well, was he in fact guilty of what or they said no. he did? Right. Yeah. I, I, I looked at it as it, th- that he was like legitimately doing it, not doing it as a signal. So I, I took it as his, as his innocence, but it's it, like, I think it's supposed to be sort of nebulous because like, yeah. There's a whole part when he's in film class, and we'll get to this, where yeah. um, Tim Blake Nelson says, his teacher says to him, like, every story has different perspectives. Like, right. so because people are different and they see things differently. So it could legitimately be that when he came out, the sun was glaring and he did like this. And he was like looking at the light because that's what he does. Right. But to the guys across the street, they're like, that's the signal. Right. So. Right, right. Both of those are valid perspectives. Like they're not, they're not exactly wrong. The woman coming into the store thinks he's he's doing a signal. She don't really know. She's just hearing hindsight and going, oh, he did that thing. Yeah, sure. Like I guess he was, yeah. Right. So like it's that I think that's the point, is that both are true. Right. Right? So I don't so know. The um, prosecution's case was kind of flimsy, yo. Like yeah. it's super flimsy. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, 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 come on, yo. Like just the way they were presenting the arguments for uh, Steve uh, and his culpability. Like uh, that guy did a piss poor job, man. Uh, but, but we all know how this shit works, right? Oh yeah. Like sometimes that doesn't matter. They even say it in the movie. They're, they're like, there's 12 people have them th- think you're guilty. Uh, right off the right bat. Off the bat. Right. Because of what you look like. Incidentally, felony murder, before we get into the story, felony murder is when you are involved in a crime and someone dies. Right? Like, like if you are the getaway driver and two people, like, they get out of your car, your homeboys get out of your car, go rob a bank, somebody gets killed in the bank, right? A teller gets shot and killed in the bank. Because you are a part of that crime. Even though you didn't go in the building, that's felony murder. You you get You get hit with that crime, right? That happens, like, a lot. Here's the difference between black America and white America. We know for a fact that a police officer was killed during the Capitol riots. We know he was killed, right? He was beaten to death. He or he was beaten, went to the hospital, and he fucking died, right? He died of his injuries. Every single person who was involved in going into that building should be hit with felony murder. So when people say, well, what crime did they commit? Doesn't fucking matter whether they did anything or not. They broke the law by being there. So that's the difference between black America and or the justice system for black people and white people. You can guarantee fucking tea if that was all people of color or black people specifically and, a, and an officer died, they would all get hit with felony murder. Not just eight officers. Like, like, it wasn't like two or three of them that died that day? Well, like, one guy died of his injuries that day. Another one died of, like, suicide. Yeah. Like, like, but of, like, actual physical injuries, yeah. that one guy died. That should be a felony murder charge mm-hmm. across the board. But you will never get that because they're all white. 
So, like, if people are looking for, well, what did they all do? There you go. There's your answer. They should all be charged with felony murder. But so it's an, um, just an important distinction I'd like to make. I was reading a few reviews of this movie, and um, <laughs> so was I. <laughs> no, no. Uh, and I want to know if Micah has seen this too, but there were some people who dinged the movie because they said it has sort of a white savior trope. That's one of them that I saw. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Is the white savior the lawyer? Yep. <laughs> Nigga, come on. That was, are you? Are you? <laughs> that come was on, argument. yo. That was her argument. And if this is the same review, she also mentioned, well, yeah. <laughs> She said, well, yeah, uh, but, you know, the movie does an adequate job of, you know, showing that our hero is not a monster. But what about all the other black people who are portrayed? Why aren't they uh, uh, shown as uh, why aren't they given the opportunity to not prove that they're monsters? They literally went in and killed this dude. What the fuck? The criminals? All right, yo. All right, yo. You're too woke. You're too woke. You're too woke. That's insane. They beat this dude and shot him. Yo, come on. They showed a tape. They showed a tape. Um, John on. David Washington playing playing a criminal. Come on. No, I, mean, I love it, yo. Like, no, I love it. Funny, yeah. I love it, yo. I love it because <laughs> I just don't see that dude like that at all. And like this came out. This was like made in 2018 before Malcolm and Marie and Tenet yeah, 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 and shit. Yeah, yeah. And he's just he's just a nigger in this movie. Days. Yeah, I, I, was, I was like, I was just like, you Denzel boy. I'm like, okay, all right, could you play <laughs> playing a tough? Yeah, when he show up with the with the brush on his face, I was, all right, all right, you need to go sit down. He, he has a teardrop. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> but so that's a stupid I'll, review, by the way. That's a stupid I'll, review. I'll talk about I'll talk about the ending to the book when we get there. But there is a reason in the book why the lawyer is a white woman. Oh, okay. And and, and I think I, I think it would have been a little more impactful if they had um included it in the actual film um by the way she's not a, she's not the savior if anything he saves I, I himself thought, well if 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 the white savior trope the was going to be applied to anyone i thought they would have put it on um the the, the uh the teacher the, yeah the yeah teacher. tim blake now said but his shit ain't work out either. He was like, I got right. yeah, his shit backfired. Yeah, he was like, hey, I got something to say. They were like, don't do that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You, so, so he likes telling stories. Huh? Yo, that was, yo, I was like, yo, this is making me angry. <laughs> like that lawyer was making me angry. That shit was pissing me off. Oh, so these are your acquaintances. So you're acquainted with a lot of criminals. I was like, nigga, come on, yo. Even though the lawyer was like, he knows better than that. <laughs> come on, dude. Yeah, that was that was some textbook bullshit ass lawyering. Get out of here. Um, yeah, the movie opens up. Um, the movie opens up with uh, some surveillance, some surveillance uh, footage of this robbery at this bodega, uh, which leads to the death of uh, the clerk. Then we cut immediately to um, Steve, uh, the seventeen year old, being questioned by uh, by uh, great value J.K. Simmons. <laughs> Uh, he's like, yeah, you got AIDS? Like, Jesus Christ, dude. No, I, I don't have AIDS. Um, and we see him, we see him get taken to, uh, to jail. Um, I don't never want to go to jail. You know? No, <laughs> this is, uh, again, this is my, this is my horror story. This is my <laughs> I can't, uh, I cannot imagine. I'm 41 years old. And the first thing he says to this dude, or like one of the first things he says to this dude, is exactly what I would say to my to, 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 that I would say to this guy. Are my parents here? <laughs> like, yo, I'm scared. I don't want to be here alone. Call my dad. Call my mom, please. Hurry up. Nah, yo. Nah, yo. Again, not built for jail. And anybody commenting, you ain't built for jail either. Nope. You on YouTube making some stupid ass comments? Shut up. Right. <laughs> Shut up. Right. Nope. Get the fuck out of here, man. Nope. Um. So we uh we see um and this is he's he's kind of like writing in a diary he's writing his screenplay and that's the framing mechanism for the story he is he is the narrator um telling the viewer what's going on through um through the lens of of a screenplay sure um it's a clever way is, to tell the story which is cute it's yeah. it's it's adorable. I I enjoy it. Um, we see him uh, with his public defender. Her name is what is her name? Oh, 
You know what? I'm um, O'Brien. Yeah, Maureen O'Brien. Uh, yeah, she's she's been on a bunch of shit. Like she's just like a super uh, uh like she's on a lot of TV shows and shit. Um, sure. I I, I want to probably a lot of legal dramas. Um, I'm sorry. I I, I want to go back just a second. So this screenplay is done. I, I mentioned uh, Rada Blank. Um, so the director is is a white dude, right? Which I couldn't tell. Right, I try. I try to wait. I try to watch the movie and see if I can tell if it's a white person or not. Um, but I couldn't tell, and I think the reason why I couldn't tell is because the screenplay is written by a black woman. Um, but she's a, she's a Rada Blank is the one who um, wrote, directed, and starred in the the forty year old version, uh, which is on Netflix, which I hear is very very good. Um, but seeing seeing how good this is, I'm I'm doubly more uh, interested in watching that. So anyway, I, I just wanted to mention that. Go ahead. So he's uh, he's in a meeting with his uh, public defender, um, and she, he's he's on trial. He could get twenty five years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know, yo. Again, every single person during and, the Capitol riot should get at least twenty five years. I, I don't Just know if I said this earlier, but he's seventeen. 17 years old. Yeah, because there's another character who shows up who's fifteen, and I'm like, that dude can play any age, apparently. <laughs> like you were you were talking about cowboys two weeks ago on the show. What the <laughs> fuck? Crazy. So um he's he's having a meeting with his public defender. And um, you know, public defenders, I mean, we've all seen stories about them. They're all overworked and and when soon as soon as you say public defender, yeah. I immediately think, Oh, well then she's gonna try and plead him out. That's what they and, do. Uh, Right. And the and the DA comes in and uh, or the the ADA or whatever he comes in and he's like, look, you're a public defender. I know you got a t- I, you got a huge caseload. I'm gonna just plead this out, and get it over with. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, oh, in the meeting that he's having, he asks her, uh, um, Steve asks the public defender Maureen, uh, you believe me, don't you? You believe that I'm innocent, right? Yeah. And she dodges the question, right? She's like, I, you know, I'm here to do my job. Yeah, it don't matter. Don't matter what, don't I, matter believe. what I believe. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Look, and, as a man about to face 25 years, it absolutely matters to me if you believe me. Like, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I, I, I thought the body language here was was interesting because she wasn't she wasn't looking at him in the eye. Right. Like that. Like the entire she was looking down at her her notepad pretty much doing anything else except looking at this boy in, in, in the face. And I thought that was, that was pretty telling, especially considering the, her, her body language uh, throughout the, throughout the rest of the film. Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't see him as a person yet. Right. Right. He is a, a client or a potentially, you know, guilty man. Yeah. So the, uh, the ADA comes and he's like, look, split him out, get it over with. She's like, look, this guy, you don't know him. He's, you know, he's a good kid. Maybe five to seven. And he's Yo, and ADA is just like, yeah, no. And ADA is just like, nope. I, 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 I wanna, I wanna, I wanna nail him, right? I have a hundred percent conviction rate, or whatever was in that, uh, was in that uh, Denzel Washington movie. <laughs> um, so we go to, we go to trial. Uh, which is a very weird, uh, looking court. Well, not weird looking, but it is, uh, it is all gray and it's, it's, it's gray and okay. it's stark and it's very different from, it's very sterile. Yeah. Right. Um, it's from, um, is, I was going to say like, it's from like right, right there before the right, right before he gets to the courtroom, he says, he probably says justice is gray and then it switches directly to that gray courtroom. Hmm. Yeah, it's um it's it's a it's a very interesting look. Um I mean, and, what do you, what do you think about that? Like what do you think about the symbolism of that, right? You know, justice justice is not gray. Like it really well, isn't. Not for black well, people it's not. It it uh you know, everyone is like, "Oh, justice is blind," which is essentially them dumbing the justice system down to me as you know 
uh, you should. Oh well, ju- it doesn't matter what you look like. Like rules are rules, right. and and but it's not that. It's not. It's no, never that. Especially with it, especially with trial by jury. <laughs> yeah, justice is not blind. There's more <laughs> eyes on it this time. Have, 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 I, have either you served on a jury for for like a crime like this? I yeah, have, no. Yeah, yeah. attempted murder. Do try to kill a dude in a crack house. Uh, armed robbery and murder. Baltimore. Yeah. Yep. Nah, probably the same dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, Baltimore's probably oh. the same dude. Oh. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was. Yeah, he bought, they he, would exclude he, exclude us from the jury if we said that. Dude, they gave that dude that that on my trial. They gave that dude forty years. Yeah. Oops. Well, let me rephrase that. We gave that dude 40 years. Um, yeah, look, you know, I actually let me push back a little bit. I think justice is blind in the same way that white people go. I don't see color. <laughs> it's like it's it's in that way. It's blind. Like it, it doesn't take into account any level of reality. Right. Like nine times out of ten, it doesn't. Right. It's just, oh, well, you know, black kids here probably, you know, probably a criminal. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter that you know it, it's not until much later in the film that you meet another character who goes well i was forced to do this because i was afraid of right. someone else and then that turned out to be like bullshit obviously but justice doesn't have any space for that right like because that's you know that's what we find out is basically this, this bullying tactic of like you're gonna fucking do this i'm gonna fuck you up kind of thing is like what is the impetus for for any of this. So right. yeah, justice is blind in that way, but that's, that's not a, that's not a, it doesn't see race. No, it, it's blind in like, it has massive blind spots. Yeah. Um, so we get the first, uh, flashback and I'm going to kind of blow through most of these early flashbacks. Uh, they're all here to set up, um, uh, uh, uh they're, they're here to let us know the type of kid that, uh, I almost called him loose. The the type of kid that uh, Steve is, you know, we see him. He's just a normal kid, right? He's he's got a, a, a mom and dad. He's got a a little brother that looks up to him. Uh, they live in New York. Um, he's into he's into photography and art. Um, it's it's all it's all backstory, right? right? Um, we, uh, we cut to the trial, uh, opening statements and I, I, I really enjoy, uh, movies and television shows for opening statements and closing remarks. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, th- no, this is where, this is, this is where the bread is buttered, man. Like courtroom dramas. Yeah. They, they live and die on these moments. They do. Yeah, man. They do. They do. Uh, let me, let, let me go back a little bit though. Um, to the relationship between him and his parents. One, um, Jennifer Hudson and Jeffrey Wright. It's I know, a bit, I know, guys, I know. It's, it's, a lo- it's, it's a little bit of golf in time. Like, I looked it yeah. up. Jeffrey Wright is like 55 and she's 39. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, Jeffrey Wright. Like, he's a he's a perfectly fine-looking gentleman. But, like, yo, that's a wild distance in time. <laughs> I just, when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's his big sister. Oh, that's his mom? Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, yeah. I always see her as so young. Like Especially since like the actor in real life is like twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. Yo, he is. <laughs> he is. It's it's, it's kinda wild. Like I'm seventeen. No, you're not. <laughs> you gotta suspend your you gotta suspend your disbelief. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, a bit. You gotta suspend you gotta suspend your disbelief that uh that this Dominican or Puerto Rican man is playing a black guy. Uh when obviously he is uh what was that character's name in Shaft? Oh, Peoples. Peoples. Peoples, Peoples, Peoples Hernandez. Peoples Hernandez, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey Wright can play every character. Jeffrey Wright is a phenomenal actor. He, he is, is a phenomenal he, actor. He is a he is a massively underrated actor for as good as he is. Yes, I, I I really need to see Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright should be a goddamn super duper star. He should be. Yes, he should be. Jeffrey Wright arguably should be up there with like um like a Daniel Day Lewis or something like that. Like he is. Like I've never seen Jeffrey Wright in anything where I'm like, I don't think he's giving his all here. Like, no, he right. is amazing in everything. Um, and apparently he can play what what ethnicity do you need? Do you need a Puerto Rican? That's fine. Do you need a black man? That's fine. I'll scientist, whatever. I, I can play everything. You need a, you need a robot? 
<laughs> like, yeah. Whatever. Right. Is he a cool. robot on that show? He's a robot in Westworld. Oh, see, I didn't know he was a robot. I thought he yeah, was a regular scientist. He, that he was a human. On he was a human and a robot. Damn, dual role. Dude is awesome. He's that good. He's that good. He's, he's that damn. Good. We need someone to play a robot and a human. Got it. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be Commissioner Gordon. I can't wait. Um, as he should be. Um, so his parents' relationship with his parents. Yeah, like so his relationship with his parents, I thought was good. I mean, they don't really deal. Like ironically, they don't they don't delve too deeply into his relationship with his mother, which is like normally par for the course. But I actually like that they did a little bit more focusing on him and his dad, right? And 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 again, I'm biased because I am a dad, right? Like so, like there's that weirdness, but um, or not weirdness, but like there's that bias. Um, but I liked, I just liked their relationship. It felt real to me. Like it, it felt like how I would like to see my relationship with my daughter at that age. Right. And I'm sure Michael Fields is probably the same way. Um, he'd probably try to fight his son as well. Um, <laughs> terribly, but I mean, maybe I probably, but, but like the, you know, I just liked, I liked that relationship. It gave, it gave, it showed his, it showed, um, uh, Steve's. Like, he's a grounded kid, right? Like, he doesn't have, like, an adversarial relationship with his parents. Like, fuck you, mom and dad. I hate you. Like, right. he doesn't have that. Like, he has a, like, like you said, he has a great relationship with his brother. His brother looks up to him. Um, they just, they were, like, a good black family. Like, his dad's, like, some sort of, like, graphic designer. They got a brownstone in New York. I guess they're yeah. super rich, right? Yeah. Um, that, ba- that basement was well developed. I was like, damn. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, where is he going to go see one of his friends' basement? Oh, his dad has his business down there. Oh, they're the Cosbys. Got it. Like, god damn. Um, so I I like that they showed that. Like to give him, you know, to give him some sort of foundation before like having his world, you know, you know, kind of torn to shreds. Yeah. It also does a good job of juxtaposing um What's going on in that courtroom, right? Like, right. It, 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 like, if you're one of those people who makes a snap judgment about someone based on what they look like, oh, well, here's, you know, no, here's this kid. He's actually just a real regular ass kid, right? And then immediately cut back to the courtroom, like, oh, yeah, but he must have done something, right? Like, why right. would he be here? He must have done something. Um, That's it. And it gets you questioning your, your your oh, biases. Yeah. yeah, your biases. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, in this regard, like this shit, the, you know, this um, the state attorney or whatever is is doing a uh, Petro, uh Petrocelli. Like he's doing a really good job, right? He is he is playing to those biases. Like like you said, like why are you here? Why would he be here? Like, right. uh, that's not an argument. <laughs> like that's a terrible right. argument, <laughs> but it well, works yeah. on people. It works on people like his lawyer, you know, Steve's lawyer says later, like people see Petrocelli and they're like, well, why would he lie? Right. Like that's, right. that's how the, that's how the jury, that's how the jury sees him as this lawyer. Like, why would he lie? Our job is not to prove that he's lying. Our ju- our job is to prove that he's mistaken, which is a right. really good way of, of, of uh, framing that. And it's true. Yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, lawyering and rhetoric it it is it's so frustrating i am not a words person i am a numbers person things work where they don't right Right. like that's just my brain and and i I, i'm i'm great on the math portion of the sat i ain't really with the reading (laughs) right i don't like to read which is why i which is why which is why i just could not do the 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 patent job, right? Because a lot of that is a bunch of lawyering and bullshitting yeah. and finding loopholes and all that shit to deny shit. And I just, I, I admire people who can do it, but I'm also incredibly frustrated because I'm smart enough to, I'm, I'm smart enough with words to know bullshit, but yeah. I'm not smart enough to be like, yo, you can't, yeah, logical fallacy, straw man, uh, red herring, wh- whatever. <laughs> you can't say that shit. Moreover, <laughs> objection sustained. You're <laughs> <laughs> just yelling at your desk and like, what are you doing? 
So uh, we we get we cut to you know them continuing to give uh, opening statements. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> when you said the objection thing. I just thought of what was that last Tyler Perry movie in the fucking courtroom? Uh, <laughs> objection. A fall, a fall from grace. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> That dude never watched a legal drama day in his life. Like, lady, what are you talking about? There is some um, aspects to the relationship he has with his parents. And I don't know if y'all caught this, but there are some moments where in the courtroom, like when they zoom in, like when his parents, when they call him like a monster, where there's like a little bit, like a little bit of doubt, I think. I yeah, saw. no, absolutely. And, and I'm just, and I'm just like, man, like they're, like are they like are his parents actually asking themselves that their their start their student who goes to this really good high school their film their film nerd of a son who wears a a real baseball cap and is a straight up geek yeah yeah like Jay <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, excuse me you, you have, have to. to you have to you can't you can't you're you're a bad parent if you believe if you blindly believe your parent your your child is is 100 percent. yeah kids lie man 99 <laughs> percent of the time that's fine but you gotta leave that one percent in there for doubt you do because right because kids do. lie they lie all the time all the time i'll yeah. see my daughter do something I'm like did you do that no <laughs> i'm like right it's 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 instinctive right? yeah it is it's just lie. nature it's human nature to lie yo so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, Tell us so, more. so it's my daughter it's, blames farts on my dog. <laughs> she does. That is such a kid thing. <laughs> she does. They're just lies. She laughs. laughs. She farts. I'm like, did you toot? And she's like, no, Baxter tooted. And I'm like, I, <laughs> I was holding you. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, don't do that. She's like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be a lawyer. <laughs> so yeah, we um. So yeah, I, I the uh, end of closing statements. Uh, the the district attorney, prosecutor, uh, just straight up calls them monsters. It's like this guy is a monster. This yeah, I, guy is a monster. I, like you said before we started, I thought that shit was like, is he just dreaming that shit? Yeah, because there's a couple times like he's he's thinking of something. Like when he gets up and he runs up to the judge, like that shit didn't happen. Right, but right. <laughs> like, I was like, oh no, this is this is just how he sees what he's saying right they were like nah he really said that i was like yo that's wildly unacceptable to do um but that's i mean that line is incredibly powerful right to call young black men monsters and that is how they're seen innocent or or not right and white men why kids are not seen in that way, right? Like no, you can't, you can't do that in a courtroom. Yo, that's a crazy line to say. I'd be like, objection for being an asshole. Like I don't know, it's gonna be a rule. Trying to dehumanize my client, yo. Like what the yep. fuck, yo? Yeah. Like, get the nah, yo. But at the same time, that's what they do to us. Yeah. We're thugs. We're monsters. You know, like that's you know, in war, that's what they tell troops to do. Right. They figure out a nickname. That's why in every war they have a nickname for the enemy. It dehumanizes them. Right. It allows you to do things that are inhumane to them. It is easy to treat black men in this case um, like monsters and like animals and lock them up for the rest of their lives at 17 when you don't see them as human. So the goal is to treat them that way. The goal is to call them thugs. The goal is to, to call them anything but young black men or young black boys in this case. Yeah. Because there, there's even a stipulation like, you know, Mike has, you know, has said on numerous occasions, he doesn't call his son like a little man. Um, right. Like they're like, oh, these these young men and his lawyer, Steve's lawyer later on goes, this 17 year old boy. Yeah. Right. It's important to understand that he is a kid. Yeah. Even though he, actually, even though this nigga is really 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually in that scene, that's where I'm like, I was going to get earlier about how the body language evolves because in that scene it's like she stands really close to him and she puts like a soft hand on the shoulder like 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 he's like he is like a little kid like she's his mom in, in a sense right. um that's probably where that woman got the whole oh she's quite the savior <laughs> yeah you're calling a but lawyer a savior is one of the dumbest things just doing her job that's, and the <laughs> character says, literally I'm says doing my, doing my job, job. <laughs> yo i look people don't know what the, the, like people have been using terms for so long, they just forget what they mean. 
they have all the vo- they have all the vocab now. So it's just oh, it's a white savior. Like a white savior would have been at the end. Is... Like if somebody came in as a surprise witness and was like. I, I overheard that young black man say, I'm not doing this crime. And then I had all of this information that was these guys and not these guys. That would be a white saving where everyone's like, thank you. Thank you, Brad Pitt at the end of 12 years of slave. Thank you. Like that's a white savior. These moment. niggas are human too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What an ending. Like that would be a white savior moment. That's not yeah, what yeah. being a lawyer is not a white savior moment. Like that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, we get to uh, another flashback of um, Steve uh, in class. He's, uh, you know, film. He, he's into film and photography. Um, and we see uh, his teacher played by uh, Samuel Stearns. And um, he is, uh, he's, you know, he's, he's a dork. He's a dorky teacher, right? But he's one of those teachers that you never, like, forget. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In like yeah. a positive sense. Right. Uh, um, so Steve is out. He's taking more pictures. Um, he's hanging out with ASAP, ASAP Rocky, who, who, uh, what's his name? King. Uh, King. Yeah. yeah. He's hanging out with King. Uh, he met him, uh, in a, uh, in a, in a chance meeting. Um, he bumped into him. He's like, "Oh, my fault, my fault, my fault." He's like, "No problem, beloved." Like, wait, what? No, nah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Why you keep calling that man beloved? Yeah, I know. Yeah, look, I'm not weird... hip on slang. I don't yeah. like that. It's just a weird term of endearment for somebody, yo. Like, I, I don't even I call my it. wife beloved. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you should. You need to start. <laughs> I'm gonna when I leave here. I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna be like, "Hello, beloved." She's like, "What?" <laughs> What's wrong with you? Are you high? Maybe. Yes. Tiara has um, any has any uh, young king referred to you as uh, beloved? No, it's weird. Don't that that's so weird. Why would someone call me that? All right. I'm gonna let somebody know. They're like, yeah, if y'all want to get close to Tiara, start calling her beloved. <laughs> she loves that. <laughs> Just do it in no, a British I, I, accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, actually, uh, see, know? see, see. All you gotta do is look like. All you gotta do is look like. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's that show you watch? What's the Shonda Rhimes show? Yeah, Bridgerton. Oh, yeah, yeah. You gotta look like. Uh, yeah. Reggaeton. Look. Yeah, yeah. Reggaeton. <laughs> 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 look, I don't want to give Micah credit for anything. <laughs> Micah is like right on the money there. Yeah. yeah no, of course. Reggae, Jean, whatever. Call yeah. me beloved, yes. Yeah, reggaeton. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's all about accents, right? Like you can't, just, you can't, like you can't ask for a chicken box, right? And oh, I would like a chicken box, please. Like, no, nah, I would like salt and pepper and ketchup. <laughs> no, it's like, one no, word. No, it don't, it don't work like that in that no. accent. No, it's all one word. Everybody knows that. Salt, pepper, ketchup. <laughs> yeah, salt, pepper, ketchup. <laughs> We um fried so, hard with your dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> I love my people, man. We're ridiculous. <laughs> we really whore. <laughs> you dummies. Call people whores and dummies. <laughs> Yo, why <laughs> Yo, most of our accents is fucking crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so after that chance encounter, we see this flashback that uh, they start to kind of become friends uh, enough for uh, this dude to call him beloved. Um, and, you know, we see him taking pictures and, and just kind of like, you know, getting a feel. And he's like, look, I'm a, you know, you keep hanging out with me. I'm going to show you what, like what it is on the street. You trying to be a filmmaker. Well, what you, what you trying to do? You trying to make movies about the streets, but you ain't, you ain't from the streets. So you, you just hang out with me. I'll show you what it's like. You take your pictures or whatever. And, um, and you know, King is kind of cool, right? Like if you're a 17 year old, you think this dude's kind of cool, right? He's got like a Coogee sweater on. Yeah. Who, yo, this thing is balling with an open Coogee sweater, no t-shirt. I'm like, he's just going to funk it, it up to be damn cold. <laughs> the answer is yes, Micah. The answer is yes. It's exactly 63 degrees in New York. Oh yeah, actually, this is supposed to be the summertime. So yes, it's supposed to be. Hot. Nigga, you balling in a coogee? So that's <laughs> wild. But he's not wearing a shirt under it, so I guess that's refreshing. 
Oh, I can never did afford a Kooji sweater. I wasn't. Y'all that didn't cool. mention it early, but what did, did y'all think? Asa Rocky did a good job. I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I good. look. We were joking on the preview episode, but um, <laughs> but I was like, well, the Nas, Asa mm-hmm. Rocky, what, what? But no, they they did a very good job. They I let know. Nas I, didn't say Africa is fall. <laughs> so. I mean, here's the thing: they kept Nas to exactly the amount of Nas I needed in this movie. Like that yeah, was on, enough. That was enough. On on the preview episode, Micah said there are too many musicians in the cast list, so I'm suspicious of this being. Good. Uh, and don't throw Micah under the bus <laughs> because I was defending the movie while you were laughing hysterically, going, "Yeah, you're right. Look at all these musicians in it." And you said uh, Jennifer Hudson's in this movie, and I had to remind you that she's an Academy Award winner. <laughs> I, I I can't recall that. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm, gaslighting. <laughs> See. <laughs> women do it too line on black woman on the show see y'all this is the kind of bullying I deal with don't worry I'm just gonna edit all of this out <laughs> they'll never hear your side of it and I'll just I'll just add in and be like you right <laughs> <laughs> god damn it <laughs> so I'm trying can... to silence black women Jake again they'll never hear any of this <laughs> go ahead <laughs> So we cut back to jail. Uh, they make everyone come out of their um, cells. I don't know why, because I've never been to jail, and hopefully I will never, ever be in jail. Yeah, this is a horrifying situation. Yeah, it is, yo, because uh, it's just a bunch of niggas talking shit all night long, and then all of a sudden you just let them all out? Uh, I thought a fight was about to break out. Yeah, I was like, I don't need that. I, I, I really like how they showed how terrifying um, prison is without going like with some of the like stereotypical tropes that you see right. like when it comes to, like sexual assault and stuff they did they I, this was terrifying enough for me to be like I never want to be caught in a situation like this no, I'm good no, I don't jail ain't for me and this is not even jail this is prison yeah. no this no this is jail because their jumpsuits are, are oh, striped yeah. the solid orange jumpsuits you're in prison mm, whatever yeah, no, I don't want to I don't yeah. even want to own a jumpsuit for a Halloween costume, let alone anything else. Get the fuck out of here. No. No, I'm not I'm no. not built for that, y'all. Look. No. No, you tough it out. And if I know you and if you and if you go into jail or prison. You ain't going to visit? No. Don't it say something about that in the Bible or some shit? You're supposed to visit your friends? I thought the Bible wasn't real. What? I don't know. It's in the <laughs> back. Ain't it in the back? <laughs> like visit your friends in jail or some shit. <laughs> Shut up, they don't say that. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Look, I don't know either. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> thou shalt visit thy boy in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, Check yeah. on your niggas in prison. Yeah. Aesop Rocky four thirteen or whatever. I don't know. Yo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's uh, been a long time since I've been to church. I'm just saying. They, I look, heard that. they uh, clearly we cut, back, we cut back to the jail scene, and this is a, this is a this is something that um, that hit me uh, <laughs> way harder than yeah. uh, than I think it had any right to. Look, let me just um, say this before you to, to preface this scene: Jeffrey Wright is amazing of an actor as he is. He doesn't have a lot to do in this movie, right? Like it's it's pretty it's not hard focused on him. This scene alone, this is his big scene. He proves why he's supposed to be there, right? Like, just in this, like, two or three minutes, he proves why he's supposed to be there. He uh, He's sitting down with his son uh, during visiting hours, and he says, um, you know, when you were born, I, would, I thought about all the different scenes in your life and how you would maybe grow up to play football, go to college, date a beautiful girl, you know, some someone like your mother maybe, and you know, get married and all this. And she's just like, I, I never thought of this. And yeah. you don't No, you, you don't. don't think of that. You don't, you don't think that something like this could happen. He said, you know? he just says, I, I even, I even yeah. imagined that I'd be mad at you about certain things. Like about stupid shit that you would do as a kid. Right. Just like dumb shit. I, I have also had those same thoughts, which is really, like when I when I when I'm watching this, I'm like, yep, yep, you do. Like you do run this timeline through your head. Like you imagine them, you know, graduating college or high school or you know, 
these achievements and driving and things like that. You imagine all of those achievements and great moments. Um, but you try not to. You try not to have in your head, you know, purposefully or not, these these type of situations. Like you don't want to see your kid dealing right. with that. You right. don't. And that's why – and that's, you know, parents don't want to think about the bad things. Um, they, they don't – or, or they, just, they don't even – it doesn't even cross that mind. Right. It doesn't, it's not conscious at all. Which is why it, it which is why some times ki- parents don't see when kids are acting a certain way or, or because they already have this preconceived notion in their head and mm-hmm. you can't do that, but it's really hard to n- not have that. Yeah. Um, everybody, you know, it's like, as you're growing up, everybody, or just in life, you're the hero of your own story, right? Right. Um, and when you have kids, you see them like you almost see them like the superheroes in their own story as it's being written, right? I mean, you're just shit, you're just waiting son, for it. I, uh, my son has the initials that he has, right? Because they are MVP. Because that's what I feel, right? Right. Like, and that doesn't necessarily mean have to mean sports. Right. But he is the most valuable person to me. And right. he is, you know, I, but, you know, uh, of course I had, of course I had, uh, you know, dreams of, of people chanting MVP. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if he's, if he's like, right. if he, if he ends up playing sports or some shit, right? Like, right. like I just, cause it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, and it I, would be kind of wild if he just became like the greatest oboe player. Of all time and like uh, look, I'm still chanting <laughs> MVP. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Go ahead and be the best oboe player. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'm a chant that shit. Like, what's an oboe? I have no idea. My uh, son he's rocks the most that valuable shit. player of that oboe. <laughs> that's, that's right. What, that's, that's the fuck he is. MVP O B. <laughs> that's my son. Right. No, but like and, and that's the thing is you have these massive high hopes. I mean, that's why every parent is like, my kid's a fucking genius. <laughs> my kid is the most talented in, you know, in all of these ways. You can't help it. You can't help it because right. you have the highest of hope for who they are. Right. Um, now, like as time goes on, you may have to like what success looks like changes. Right. You know, like it just does. Right. If your kid has a learning disability, if your kid is, you know, handicapped or something happens to them physically or something like that, you have to change those things. But no parent, no parent, no matter where they're from or where, like you could be destitute in the hood around all of, you know, you could be ace out Rocky's parents in, in, in this story. You still think that your kid has a potential and you, you see the story in your life of them doing something great outside of this situation. You do. Every parent does. Every, well, let me rephrase that. Every parent worth a damn. Yeah. They do. Oh, what was sad about this scene was that it, I feel like after Jeffrey Wright said all of that, uh, feeling still helpless that your child could get caught up in a situation like this and knowing that the world does not not only does only does not see your child the way that you do, but just doesn't even see their humanity, right? At all. That is the scariest thing as a par- parent, by the way, not being able to help your kid and being helpless. Like, like that's terrifying. What the fuck? Like, your kid's in jail. Like, I can't see him. I can't. I can't be in there with him. Like, that's horrifying. That's a horrifying feeling. I cannot. I cannot imagine. I just I cannot imagine what that would be like. And, and and sitting there in that courtroom watching a stranger who who could give, you know, less of a crap about your kid, calling him a monster with the hope of putting him away for 25 years. Right. Ba- basically basically destroying his whole life and and it will go home and just, you know, I I think what's what was interesting um before the trial right. started the judge asked right. like How's everyone's weekend? And like the guys, like I did this. Oh, we we watched Downton Abbey. You see yeah, the parents they all do like, that shit, yeah, they do. They and it's just that shit. and like you just you see King and um Steve sitting there and their parents and they're just like, what the fuck? We we don't care about Downton Abbey. How you went upstate? You're you're playing with our children's lives, but they don't care. Right. They don't care. Yeah, I like. Oh, I was I was uh. During my, during like, <laughs> as I told the the entire story or <laughs> most of the story, there's more. Um, but 
in that preview episode about you know adopting my daughter um like we had to we had a we had a trial and like that's how it kind of started too where the lawyers were like oh and then like the lawyer for the opposition uh was like oh and i did blah 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 i was like who gives a shit who gives a shit what are we talking about this is fucking serious why are, we, why are we talking about what you watched on tv or what you you know you were hanging out with your friends i don't give a fuck oh i got a good golf game man give me your club so i can throw them in the garbage i don't care get to the the shit at hand right like so I, I can completely like that is not a that's not a made up thing. That is very real. And it's, it's irritating. So, insensitive isn't the right word. Um But it's, it's for them it's a job. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. that would be like somebody getting like really bent out of shape, like, who cares what you did this weekend, Jay? Just you know, help me with my computer. And I'd be like, It's a job. Yeah. But I, I watched the new episode of Invincible. That shit was dope. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like for them, it's just a job. Yeah, we see Steve in the uh, prison yard, and uh, he's uh, doing uh, his best his best impression of me doing a pull up, um, <laughs> incredibly Aww. poorly. Um, then he starts, you know, monologuing, and he's looking around, and he's using his hand as a viewfinder. And in mid monologue, Nas comes up to him and is like, uh, "Don't do that." <laughs> people around here don't like being watched like that and um Nas uh kind of befriends this kid and you um, and you get the you get the impression that Nas is like a big deal in there yeah yeah enough that nobody really messes with him right um <laughs> yeah he just comes up I love the way he was monologuing and then it just very abruptly <laughs> whoop, whoop, don't do that <laughs> yeah, yeah don't do that um, we see more, uh, flashbacks of Luce, uh, hanging out with his friends. Uh, he's got a little girlfriend, uh, taking pictures of everybody and just, just showing you that this kid is just like any other person, right? Like he's, he's got a, he's got a girl he's sweet on. He's got his friends, uh, and then cut right back to prison life mm-hmm. or, or jail life. And, um, this this thing does this movie does a good job of snapping you in and out of you know your comfort zone right snapping you back into this gray you know stark reality right um and then the trial proceeds um they bring in a bunch of uh witnesses um uh, we see uh, one of the witnesses is a woman who walked into the bodega as uh, Steve was standing in the doorway, allegedly signaling um, the other two men. Um, and she, she she fingers him in court, um, which uh, I don't like people pointing at me anyway. Like, yeah. I can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you pointed at Tiara. I, I don't, that wasn't at me. No, that felt like it was at you. No, that, that wasn't at me. No, okay. On, on my <laughs> on my screen, I'm vertical. So, no, you weren't pointed. At Where me. am I? You are at the bottom. <laughs> How does that work? You're actually at the top. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mine is the only one that goes up on YouTube, so it's fine. <laughs> Um, so we, so this is a courtroom montage. They're bringing in all these different witnesses, all these different character, uh, uh, witnesses and stuff like that. And they bring in a doctor to gruesomely explain how, uh, the bodega shop owner died. Uh, they said that, you know, there was a struggle and uh, the way he was shot, uh, he didn't die immediately. He drowned in his own blood. Uh, all right. Um, just to you know, and the 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 prosecution does that just to make it you know just to tug on your heartstrings. This is why I hate this shit because it's it's all it's all playing on emotions and right. and and quite frankly, there's a lot of us that just aren't smart enough to or don't take things like this serious enough to to uh, uh, to, to to do jury duty. Right. No. Like, 
uh, I mean, all the stories of people trying to get out of it. Yeah. It should tell you right then and there, right? <laughs> like, is it true that you could just be like, I'm a racist? No, they don't. They, you can't. You can't rock that <laughs> shit no more. I hate all cops and blacks, Puerto Ricans. I mean, at least you get paid. To go. Yeah, not enough. You get fifteen bucks. It's fifteen dollars. No work. No, hold on. It's fifteen dollars well, a day, and you got to pay for your lunch out of the fifteen. And the only place near the courtroom is Subway. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. It ain't a win-win. No, that's a lie. No, it's Don't not. Listen. Yes, it is. You chose to go to Subway. Plenty of places in downtown Baltimore to go for lunch. Never. In walking oh, distance of the courthouse? Yes. No, it ain't. You lying. <laughs> Everybody goes to Subway. That Subway makes fucking bank. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of $15 subs. What's that? Is it the Subway on the block? No, 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 no. Uh, I wouldn't eat from that subway. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly would. I certainly wouldn't get the tuna fish from there. <laughs> Sorry, folks. That is a very local. That is a very uh, local thing. The block is where all the strip clubs are. <laughs> Police headquarters and the main area for stripping is in the, the pol- same block. The police headquarters in the red light district are on the same block. On the same block. That's There's how Baltimore the- rolls. <laughs> I used to work in the building right across from uh, the Big Top, and and wow. <laughs> see, you know, she know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> the signs, the signs, and the deals they had going on there were were a little over the top. Man. <laughs> Big Top was a, like a uh, like a porn shop, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we uh, after the courtroom scene uh, with the montage and. And uh, all that, we uh, we cut to another flashback real quick of um, King and Steve. And King is like, "Look, uh, aren't you?" He's he's explaining he's explaining how the streets work, right? Right. And um, look, it's something I don't know. I'm I'm not street smart at all. Uh, I wouldn't be able to. I, I I don't even know what street I live on. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not street smart. Um. So we uh, we cut back to the courtroom. We see Steve trying to make a phone call, uh, and he's just like, "Hey, I'm just checking in on y'all. How you doing?" Like this this kid is obviously scared. And here comes this nigga. Get the fuck off the phone, man! You ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'd be like, "You got it. You got it. End. You got it." His dad's on the other end, yo. Like I'm like I feel like I got to take a trip to the jail now if I'm the dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right, but at, at the same time, it's at <laughs> night, and you can't go in there. So you got to wait till the next day. Hope your son just didn't get his ass beat for talking to you on the phone. So next day, we see um, the public defender come in, and uh, she's just like, look, uh, half the jury decided that you were guilty the moment they laid eyes on you. Yep. You're young, black, and on trial, and that's all it really means. That's all it really takes. Um, and you know, he's like, I thought I was innocent until proven guilty. And she's just like, it depends on how the jury sees it. Right. Like she said, it's a contest. It isn't a contest of seeing who tells the truth. She says the prosecution is walking around looking very responsible, very important. The jury says to itself, well, he seems pretty honest. Why would he lie? Right. Right. And our job is not to show that he's lying. It's to show that he made a mistake. You made that point earlier. And um, it, it is it's a weird game, man. It's yeah. a weird game with, 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 with these consequences, right? Like Serious consequences. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. And she even says, like, I think, I don't know if she says in this scene or she said it earlier, but she said, like, we, I, we have to prove that you are a human being to the jury. And when she said, I was like, <laughs> like, he's a child. Like, and, and that's, and I think, you know, for me as a, as a, as a black person, I'm like, but we are human beings. Why do you have to prove his, his humanity to other human beings? Shouldn't they already know? But that's not how it is. Because black. Because black. Because black. Yeah. Um, I want to point out something, and I did not. I didn't notice it in this very next scene. I don't know if you guys noticed it. 
scene where he where he meets um he meets uh um Esvaldo Cruz uh, for the first time um uh Gerald Jerome uh who's playing a 15 year old <laughs> which is some... he was 15 No I know like when he shaves his face and like the way they shoot him I was like damn he like I mean he's 23 he's still a pretty young guy but like he can, yeah he can play a 15 year old it's kind of amazing Um but no in the scene when that scene opens um Steve is shooting with a camera he's doing the hand thing he's doing the hand thing that he does at the end. It is what he does. Like, right. Well, yeah. Cause you know, if, if, if you're looking at the sun or whatever, like you, you, you kind of, you, you just, yeah. I no, know, I know what you're saying. No, but I'm just saying like, it's interesting yeah. because like they're showing you and like when you watch it the first time, you don't realize, right? Like I totally missed that until I just saw it. Like it is an indication, like this is not something he did for the first time. This right. is a common thing that he does, which would indicate that, he, when he did it, he wasn't trying to do it to signal to somebody. He was trying to do it because that's what he does. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I just, I just find that that's I found that interesting on the second watch. And then you know, Esvaldo Cruz is a fucking piece of shit. So, so they, you know, they, they, they introduce Cruz um, through uh, through a backstory just to show that these two have some animosity, and then cut directly to the courtroom where Cruz is on trial. Cruz uh, says that the original plan was that Steve would go into the uh, bodega to signal if the coast, and then signal if the coast was clear. After that, King and Bobo would rob the store, um, and Cruz would slow down anybody that might be trying to chase it. Um, it. It is, I don't know. It's it's just hard watching. It's hard watching, like, it's interesting, but it's just hard watching these young people. You know, I know they're all in their 20s, but they're playing teenagers. Right. Right. Uh, and I'm in the moment. And it's hard watching these teenagers up here giving testimony. Um, his um, uh, Maureen, the public defender, uh, gets cross examined and she's like, Aren't you in a gang? And he's like, Yeah. I was like, how'd you get in that gang? He said, you had to leave your mark on somebody. What does what does that mean? He was like, well, we had to, we had to, we had to scald somebody's face. Oh, so you had to, you had to maim someone in order to get in the gang? Okay, basically, just to do character assassinate him. Yeah, like, and that was a wrap for yeah. him. Like that was over. Like yeah. you can't be, you can't be on some. I'm scared to do this. But I'm, I'm willing to be in a gang, like yeah, because he said he was scared because Bobo, uh, John David Washington's character, he was like Bobo said he was going to get me. Uh, but but you in a gang where you had to, where you had to, you know, make somebody two face right. in order to in order to get in, like get out of here, man. Yeah, that's um, crazy. Uh, another flashback scene um, that uh, I'm going to skip. Um, Although we do see in in that scene, we see um, we see Steve looking at uh, the memorial that uh, the memorial that's there for the uh, bodega owner. Right. Uh, oh, I will not skip the scene because this is something that me and my wife are like, why would they do this? Um, so the parents, Steve's parents, get a knock on the door. Uh, hi, I'm Detective. You know, I'm I'm Detective. Great value, Carl. Bob Hoskins, right? Yeah, Carl. And um, and and he he, they let him in. First of all, they let him in. No. And and nope. and, and and second of all, if they apparently they ask to see his son, and then Jeffrey Wright's character goes up and and gets him and is like, "Hey, come on down for a second. Um. No, in no. fairness, they think he's going to question him. Right. D- did they did they say yeah. that? Yeah, yeah they say that. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, mm-hmm. he said, yeah, we thought we so, thought you were going to question him. Some questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the like um, the second he arrests them or arrests Steve, if you listen to the dialogue from his parents, that's what they say. Uh, what that we thought we were just going to question you thought we, yeah the, yeah because he I like think, he literally says you said you were going to ask him some questions that that's yeah. the first thing out of Jeffrey Wright's mouth uh that's uh out of uh what's her name's mouth oh. but 
But yeah, uh, nah, yo, nah, nah. I, I wouldn't have let them in. I mean, I get it, right? Like these people are nice, and you know, oh yeah, we're just trying to help out. But uh, I don't, I don't think I would have let them in. Period. Right. You want, you want to ask some questions about what? Yeah, I'm gonna need details. Yeah, it's, you I'm know, gonna, I, I'm gonna be asking questions. Yo. Yeah, like, you're not. I don't have to let you in my house. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think for for parents, it's, where is it, this takes place in what Harlem? I, yeah. You think that, you, that they would have like been a bit more discerning before letting the cop in like that? Yep. No, I, I no, I, I probably wouldn't have let them in, but I definitely would have. I mean, I like we can stand like, on the stoop and talk. Like, yeah, you, no. right. I, I don't mind helping, but uh, I ain't let you in my house, yo. And I'll oh, uh, fuck with you like uh, that. I mean, look, I don't necessarily blame these people, right? Like, I don't, I don't blame these parents right, for this. But, right, right, right. But at the same time, it just, it just didn't seem um, believable to me. Hmm. Uh, it would have been more <laughs> believable if, you know, they picked him up or something. You know, right? I mean? Like right. at one point, he thought that the cops were coming to his house, right? Like, right. I thought that's how that was going to go. Right. Um. We're still in flashback, and we get the um, we get a meeting of uh, so Steve comes, uh, King calls him over, and King is like, "Yo, this is my cousin Bobo, uh, played very oddly by John David Washington." Uh, it's expertly, not that it's odd. Expertly. It's not that it's, uh, it's not that it's odd. It's just it's John David Washington, yo. Like it's that dude from Ballers, like, right? Like, <laughs> like, like, like this role feels very small for him now. Yes. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. Like he's a he's a real movie star now, right? So to like watch him playing just like a common like homeboy bad guy is just like, yo, you were intended. This, <laughs> this this gives me the kind of vibes when he said that he used to lie and say that his dad was in jail. So yeah, so, yeah, so, that he wouldn't tell people what, Denzel Washington was his father. Yeah. yeah, that's what this feels like. Which is wild. Because he must have told that to white people. Because the second he started talking, I'd be like, nigga, you sound just like Denzel Washington. Yo, you got his gate and everything. Yo, like, what are you, you sure you you don't know him? <laughs> nah, that's not my dad in jail. Really? <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me Google. Nah, yo, that's you at a premiere. Uh, like, nah, yo, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. So during this meeting, um, King is talking to Steve, and he's like, he's going on and on about trust and. You know, I need to, you know, I trust you, you trust me, but I need to know that, uh, that, you know, you trust me and that, that you got my back, just like I got your back. And, mm -hmm. nope. and, uh, and then I'd be like, sure. And that's when I just kind of, that's when I extricate myself. Yeah. Like, I, be, I, I, just, I never talk to that nigga again. Not yeah, ever. Yeah. Hey, come over here. Now I'm busy, yo. I'm washing my hair, whatever. No, but you're, but you're bald. Yeah. If I don't keep washing it, it'll grow back. I got. Mm -mm. I, I just rub a. I just rub a, a nice, uh, a nice dollop of nair right in it every night. Like I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta go. But but I but I won't immediately dismiss this because like this is this is peer pressure, man. Like, hey, seventeen, right. of course. Yeah, and and that's and his friend. That's his. You're right. That's his friend, right? Like that's the. He's also enamored by him. Right. Like he's enamored by, like you said, like that sort of street life and that the level of authenticity he has, like he's enamored by it. Like when he's taking pictures of him uh, during the uh, Coogee sweater basketball game, um, like the look in his eye is, is like he's infatuated with him. And, and I don't mean yeah. that like, like sexually, no. I mean, but like, like, wow, like this guy is so cool. Like we've all, we've all, you know, found somebody, you know, just like, wow, this person is just very cool. And, and that's yeah, just how he sees him. Like this person, this person refers to me as his beloved. I mean, clearly I, we're, I we're gotta, close friends. I gotta see how this plays out. No, you don't. <laughs> tell you, you shouldn't. Look, I tell you, any dude's like, "Hey, beloved, yo, I'm good, dog." Like, <laughs> hey, have now, a now good I, day. Now, now, look, he wished that there was some romance between the characters. Oh, oh well, well, there you go. Up. Is that is that what the young people say? Shipping, you're shipping them. Sure. No, yes. no. James King is a very toxic person. I know, but like, I mean, now, now that now hearing y'all talk about it, and I'm like, 
Yeah. That's a better love story. That's that a better love crazy. story. Yes. They they <laughs> they run they run to each other's arms as they're dragging King's ass to jail for thirty years. Yeah. Uh, Man, the betrayal, the heartbreak. Whatever. Fuck Bobo. That's all I have to say. <laughs> so uh his mom visits him in jail and uh this was a very odd exchange. Like he very much is closer to his dad than his mom. And um you know, his mom is like, you know, I, I haven't taken haven't taken you to church, but I got some scripture that I want you to read. <laughs> Yo, this would be like this would be like my mom visiting me in jail. I'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and then as he's reading the scripture, I'm like, like he looking around like, oh, they gonna fuck me up when oh, I get married. Right? You're, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> right. Like, you're, you're making me look like a real bitch ass nigga right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> And I, I was thinking, like, so what, like, and if you had taken him to church more often, then then what? What? <laughs> right. I mean, the, it it might have changed them. I mean, I know y'all don't think that church works, but like, you never said that. It does. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you grow up in it, and you, and you know, like it, it has an effect. So, I grew up in it. No, you didn't. Yes, I you did. Didn't grow up. Yes, week. I did. Every week. Yes. No, I don't. Yeah. Believe what? You don't believe, nigga? You don't go to church every week as an adult. I know. That's why I don't believe you. <laughs> I see Those you there because I wasn't there. At all. No, they're not. not? I went. <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> From the age of three to nineteen, I went to church I every would week. Not, I would not hang every out week. with anybody. Wait, three to what? Nineteen. <laughs> three to but nineteen. Yes, nineteen. That's nope, don't believe you. Don't believe <laughs> okay, you. I wouldn't have hung out with somebody that went to church every week. Didn't y'all meet in high school or middle school? How yes. did you? High school. Yes, high school. And and you've never said anything about it because I didn't believe it when I was going. Oh, man, I got to go to church today, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm over there on Sunday for a wrestling pay per view. Oh man, it was church sucked today, man. Like, nah, nah. No, I didn't believe any of it. I was just buying my time until I was an adult, where I could just choose not to go. So you wait till you were 19. Yeah, they asked me. They 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 had a guest pastor there, and uh, that dude was like, "I don't want to hear the the money that that clangs. I want to hear the, the the ones that fold in the." Uh, um, the you know the offering plate, and I was like, I literally stood up and I walked right the fuck out, and I've never been back. <laughs> nah, that should piss me off. I was like, fuck you, dude. Nah, nope. Nah. By that point, I mean, I was like, I was a solid two years into being like, I'm not really being. I don't know. I believe any of this. Like people believe this. I was like, there's a lot of really attractive women in church. Like <laughs> that's kind of why I was still going for like the last two years. She don't want to get with a church girl. Nah, I realize that. Not a church person. What yeah. Fuck? Yeah, because then yeah. then my life would be like that. Um, what's the uh, what's the rapper uh, Ja Rule? You know, fell in love with a church girl. That was a movie he did. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and I've been asking <laughs> Micah and Terrence and, asked, I want to do that movie. What what, what is it? is it on a fake streaming service? Crackle, whatever. Or like two, it's probably on Tubi. It was on Netflix for a while. It might still be. No. Fell in love with a church girl. Like, or whatever. Like, come on. Yeah. Lies. So, so uh, I don't know where we are, but in the courtroom, we're back in the courtroom, and uh, Bobo comes and, and takes the stand. And uh, King immediately has an outburst, right? He was just like, oh, fuck you, nigga. Like, <laughs> Ain't you that know, his cousin? Just, yeah. yeah. God damn. <laughs> And the judge is like, uh, you need to calm your ass down. Uh, I'm the only person that can call black people niggas in here. In my courtroom. <laughs> I'm the HNIC. Hey, uh, um, so Bobo takes the witness stand, and he basically says that James pulled the trigger and vaguely recalls that Steve, who he hardly knows, was meant to give the all-clear signal. Um, the uh, public defender crosses and says, you know, what was he supposed to do? Because at one point, you know, Bobo was giving some vivid details. It's like, what do you do? So what'd you do after the robbery? Uh, I went and got a chicken box with an orange soda or something. Yeah, like mad details. 
This was a year ago. Yeah. Remember what you ate? <laughs> he said, I went down to a chicken spot on Lennox, got wings, fries, and an orange soda. He remembered the location and what he had. Lemon pepper wet. Like, like whatever. It's crazy. And 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 the public defender is trying to cross. And he's like, and, and she's basically just like, like, so do you remember what, 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 what's his name? What do you remember what my client was wearing? Just like, I don't be looking at dudes clothes like that. Nigga, that shit had me rolling. I was like, <laughs> that's a classic answer. <laughs> all right, yo. And, and she's trying to ask him all these little details. Cause you know, he remembered that he went to a chicken spot on Lennox and got some, and, and had an orange soda with it. Right. Um, but she does a very good job of, discrediting uh this criminal um and and all i could think about was well what about his chance to not be uh, labeled a monster (laughs) (laughs) this dude was already in prison for selling drugs and out here trying to only do another 10 years well yeah but i mean but does he also say like basically i'll say what you ever want me to say if we can cop a cop a plea or if we can cop a deal or something like that somebody called somebody brought that up it was like so you made a deal to basically finger somebody one of these two guys or both of these guys in court right (laughs) it was like yeah (laughs) i mean yeah yeah like fuck them (laughs) yeah i'm not trying to do more than 15 or 17 years like good luck god damn you imagine getting sentenced to 15 years in prison? No. God. I, I w- Yo, that's an insane amount of time. Nope. 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 Yo, your nope. kid would be a grown person at that point. Yeah, and that's something like, like you know, um, his mom was like, you know, this doesn't change who you are and don't let this change. I'm like, have you, do you see what your son looks like? He looked pretty changed to me. Yeah. He'd be very, he would be very changed. Because I think you can assume at this point, he's been in jail for quite some time, like almost a year at this point. Really? Do you think it's that long? Yeah, because they talk about how this, the way that they're talking, talking about the events, they say it happened last summer. So you can assume that he's been in jail for, for, for at least several months at this point. Oh, wow. Jeez. I didn't even think about that. I, I, I was assuming it was like maybe a month or so. No, they they kept saying last year, last year. Yeah, Jesus, uh, when the crime happened. Wow. Uh, who knows when they picked him up? But right. several months. Um, so we uh we cut to a quick flashback of a classroom scene where basically the um the film teacher is uh describing a scenario in which there's one event with three separate truths to it. Right. right. Three different perspectives, three separate truths. And um, it is it's up to the filmmaker. It's up to the, the person telling the story to figure out which truth they want to present. Right. Right. Uh, more on that later. Um, we uh, we cut uh, immediately to the courtroom. Uh, surprise character witness. The film teacher. He comes up. He's just like. Don't worry, kid. I got you. The white savior, right? <laughs> this, the, the white savior comes in. He's just like, I know this black boy. He's not like this at all when I see him in my class. And the prosecutor comes up and he's like, you know what he does outside your class? Well, no. I mean, I, 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 oh, okay. So he could be a stone cold murderer outside your class, huh? He's like, well, I, I, I mean, I technically yeah but like <laughs> see this is where this is where lawyering pisses me off because like dude was getting ready to go into like a detailed nuanced explanation he was like it was a yes or no question you're like damn yep <laughs> and, and like that that's he just trying to white man i'm saying like I, I wasn't done and he was like oh yes you were yeah yeah no you can't white man your way in a courtroom <laughs> and that shit don't work you can't, you, can't, you can't white man your way to uh in, in front of an italian prosecutor nah, yo, he out white man you <laughs> <laughs> he was like, but see, this is how I do it. Yeah, that's like, that's a super, that's one of the things about like the law I cannot stand is that you can ask a contextless yes or no question. Yep. Like that's a bullshit, that's a bullshit thing to do. Um, yep. did, did you do this? 
yes, but no, you said yes, bro. Sorry. Like, what is this, Twitter? What the fuck? <laughs> like, this shit makes me so angry. Like, when I had to take the stand um, in that case um, for, like, the adoption, the the lawyer was like, do you have a problem with – because, you know, it was a whole thing with, like, police or whatever. And he was like, mm-hmm. you know – do you have a problem with the police? And I literally took like 30 seconds and made it as uncomfortable as I could because what I wanted to say was, nigga, I'm a black man in Baltimore. Are you fucking serious? And then go on one of my Jay like rants. But I can't <laughs> because it's a right. yes or no question. And I said, no. And I just like, and I stared at him until he was uncomfortable and then went on with his question because I'm like, if I say yes, then it paints me as like some psychopath. But the, right. the truth is, yes, I do. But it's a little bit, you know, I, I often talk about the lack of nuance, but it is a lack of nuance. And it's purposeful lack of nuance. Right. It's madness. What you're saying is you lied under oath. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew Mike was going to say that. <laughs> Somebody's going to go back and be like, aha. Oh, shit. No, what I'm uh, saying is, no, I did not have a problem with that police officer. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, right? uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hit him with an Amari Hardwick. Did you hear that? You hear, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to hit him with an Amari Hardwick. I didn't sleep. Uh-huh. I did not hear. I did not sure. sleep with any woman since we got married. I, did but, not, I do not have a problem with a police officer. Yeah. <laughs> Numerous hey, police what? officers <laughs> is a different question. <laughs> Yeah, crazy. Um, look, uh, the white savior uh, came in and uh, got his ass uh, uh, legally knocked out. Nah, he got pieced up quick. <laughs> and he even looked at uh, Steve and was like, my bad? <laughs> he was like, I was trying to save your, your barbecue culture, but they got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> To the point where, to the point where they go back, they go back. He's talking to his lawyer. Steve's talking to his lawyer. He's just like, "I'm a lose on her." Yeah, and and he's just like, "Look, I got like this is when like desperation comes in." He's just like, "He, he what I was doing earlier." He was like, "Well, can we file a motion?" <laughs> She's like, "A motion for what?" <laughs> yeah, don't like, lady, don't answer like that. What the fuck? I'm not a lawyer. Be creative. Come on, come on, come on. I don't it's know. Like, I, I, it's like, I, I, I need some more time. I, I, can you can you just ask for the case to be dismissed? Like, like what? no. She, she was like, on oh, what grounds? He was like, on the grounds I'm innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, poor thing. But that's some look. That's some kid shit, right? That's some panicked kid shit, right? Like, that's some panicked oh, forty year old. Oh, <laughs> Like nigga, I look, I get it. You a kid? This ain't a Phoenix Wright game. We need more evidence. <laughs> Objection. Yeah, I like. I mean it. It's a funny moment because he, you know, like it's not obviously played for laughs, but it's a funny moment because he's just like he is. He's panicking. He's just like pick a legal term. I just like spin the wheel. I like just take any of them. <laughs> and she's just like, look, um. The uh, we're, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take the stand, right? Like yeah. you need to you need to be able to tell your truth, basically. Um, we already have enough that the trigger man was identified. Uh, we know that you were not one of the people who actually committed the crime. Right. You just have to make a. You just have to, you know, you and and the other guy can't go on the stand because they already it's already been proven that King lied about something. So he can't go on the stand to counteract you. Right. So this is it. This is your shot. Um, uh, Nas gives him a pep talk, um, you know, before the trial, um, uh, Steve and his lawyer go through, uh, exercises, um, uh, cross examination exercises, um, which actually really work. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he he ends up going on the tr- he ends up going uh, on the stand, and it's perfect, right? Like he answers uh-huh. everything the way that you're supposed to answer it, 
Uh, he, he, it, it's, it's perfect. It's a wonderfully done scene. Like I was rooting for this kid. Well, yep. and because he had practice with his lawyer with that right. cup thing. So she had prepared him so well. I mean, she's, she's an amazing savior. Um, doing her job uh, but she had prepared him so well for all right. of this sort of trickery and bullshit um that he was going to come in contact with yeah um it's a it's a good scene it does uh, especially if you like uh if you like like cross-examination right like if you right. if you like the order part in law and order uh this is a this is a good uh this is a good scene that is my favorite part of law and order though like it's the legal shit. Absolutely. Was this was this at yeah. the part where where he kind of monologues and and looks over at King and says like, you know, you're nothing to me. You were just another person. Basically, he had to kind of mentally put put some distance between him and his uh friendship with um ASAP Rocky. I think yeah, this was, that was also part of I, it. I believe so. Yes. Uh, this is this is the scene where he was just like, so you're acquainted with King and you're acquainted with Cruz and yeah. you're acquainted with. Bobo, you just seem to be acquainted with everybody involved in the robbery. And everybody yeah. was just like, should no, no, hey, 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 objection. Like Phoenix Wright even burst through that motherfucker. I was just like, <laughs> yep. objection, nigga. Yeah, that was, I was like, yo, even, even as I'm watching, I'm like, nigga, come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. all right. <laughs> so, so, his lawyer was even like, yo, he knows better than this, yo. Come on, man. <laughs> he got and real man, black in that moment, too. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the judge was like, yeah, I hear you, brother. Yeah, like, yeah, you do know better than that. <laughs> Even the judge was like, what yeah, the God fuck? Damn, yo. <laughs> White man, we're giving you a little too much leeway. You're not you're not Gal Gadot. Relax. See, relax. But that's but but again, that's another that's another trick, man. It's like, to get it already out there. It's the is is once the thought is out there, you can't put it back. Oh well, jury right. uh, jury, strike what I just said from the record. Right. Unhear what you just heard. You can't do that. Shit. No, that's exactly. I mean, that's a method, right? You say something you right. know is going to get slammed down, but you want to put it out there in their thoughts. Yeah. Right. I just I, like I, God damn it! I like. I don't want to say I hate lawyers, but the legal system is so fucking bullshit. It's so bullshit. It's a game. I, I, re, I respect the craft, the skill, but I but I hate it. I hate right, it. That's why. That's yeah. why they get paid so much money. The, the lawyers are like the the Tyler Perry of jobs. Like I respect <laughs> the hustle, but god damn it, I hate the craft. <laughs> <laughs> Ashtray, bitch, objection. <laughs> I was gonna say is like something I noticed is that the movie didn't put too much emphasis on the looks of the jurors like you have um steve who just says like there are different races but uh, but they don't outside like a few shots where they kind of pants and you don't really really get um many looks at them that's just something and i wonder if that was on purpose i think maybe it is because they want you to take on the position of the jury yeah so you know maybe they're maybe that that helps you to do that right by by not really showing them i mean like I saw like a white guy, like there was a one white guy they kept showing every time it like went back and forth. That white guy was like, I don't know about this black kid. <laughs> like yeah, he and, he had know, the same they face. Showing some black girl. They did yeah. show some like, uh, but I noticed like, there was like an Asian, old Asian dude. Yeah. They tried to mix it up. They yeah. didn't just throw him like, you know, 11 white dudes. Like, oh, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's fucked. I would have been, that would have been a little bit too like on the nose. Yeah. For, been on so, the nose. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think it's a, I think it's good to mix the jury up because biases against black men even exist in the black community, right? Like, yeah, I mean, look, age old example, you see a young 19 year old kid driving a fancy car. If he's black, a lot of times it comes first thing comes in your head. That kid probably sells drugs. Is a white kid. Ah, that's probably that kid's parents car. Like, that's what you think. Right. And it's, it has been beaten into everyone's head. Yeah. Like it is black, white, or or otherwise. And people who can pretend that that's not true, they're lying. Like yeah. those things come up, dude. It's it's psychological. Nobody nobody is is impervious to that shit. They're just not. Right. It's impossible. You have to like actively go. Yeah, don't do that. Like. Yeah. So I I my method is I just assume all the white kids are drug dealers. <laughs> I mean. Fair. Sure. I mean, where I grew up, they kind of were. Yeah. Do that all my black friends got weed. It was from the white kids. <laughs> I mean, it was. Who got it from their parents? Yep. Yeah. Or they just had money. I'm like, you get an allowance? Man. All right. Look, look at you. <laughs> so, 
So the um, closing statements are here. And, um, it, you know, it was never going to look good for, for King, right? Oh, like, he was a rep. <laughs> like, well, why even be there at this point? Yeah. I like when, when they call his, he's like, <laughs> what? Are you serious? I'm like, you on tape, dog. Like, come on, man. You're on tape. And two people said you did it. One <laughs> of them is your cousin. He, he <laughs> was right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, they do, uh, but, but uh, his uh, Steve's lawyer does a good job of having Steve distance himself uh, from King and Bobo and Cruz. Uh, you know, they all don't like him or they either don't like him or they don't really know him that well. And, you know, and one of them is the guy who murdered him, the, the victim. So, right. you know, you're not really going to trust these three. Right. Then. Um, we see the, the day, uh, in question and, uh, through flashback, uh, Steve is just riding along and, uh, Bobo and, and, um, King flag him down and they're like, look, man, I need you to go into that bodega, look around. And if it's, if ain't nobody in there, you give me a signal. And he's just like, well, why? And Steve is just like, fuck you, nigga. Don't ask me why. You got my back? Huh? Don't worry. I got your bike so you can't go nowhere. Yep. Exactly. Uh, so he uh, he walks over. He takes, what, 93 steps? Yeah, he says 93. Uh, and um, he, he, he says, I'll never forget it. And he goes into the bodega. He grabs a soda, looks around. Uh, the guy, the, the clerk, uh, it's just real nice to him. He's like, oh, you new around here, kid? I usually know all my customers. Like, oh, damn. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I got a wife and kid, right? <laughs> right, exactly. It's just like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, I don't need your life story, bro. I don't know what's about. But, like, Steve doesn't know what's about to happen. Yeah. So, Steve buys his drink. He walks, he walks into the doorway. He is the son hits him in the face. Uh, sorry. Uh, apparently something really good just happened in mayor of East town. And I just heard my wife exclaim, <laughs> um, oh, no, she's watching it without you. Oh, yeah. No. Cheating. Uh, yeah. Cause you people, uh, don't want to record at a normal time. Um, he, he means walks women. into the doorway. Sorry. He walks into the doorway and, um, and, and the son hits him in the face and he does the thing, like you said earlier, that he that he that he did, uh, where he kind of has his his hand in front of his face because it creates a unique effect, and he's all about like visual art, all right? And um, and the way it's played for me in the film is that that of course that wasn't a signal, right? Like that's just right. this very aloof kid, uh, you know, and and he's just doing what he, what he normally does. You see the, the white woman as she walks past, she doesn't look at him or anything. Right. 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 But in the trial, Oh, I was was watching him like a hawk. The, the shot in the trial, she, in, in her vision of the flashback, she's looking, she's looking at him. Right. 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 Uh, so it's, it's, it's wild. They, they cut back to the jury. They cut back to the, Oh, she said he wiped his brow, which also wasn't true. Right. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, she, they, uh, we're in court. The victim's family comes in all like five of them. Um, and, uh, they, they, they say, Hey, uh, King stand up. We all know this nigga's guilty so much. So that the movie don't even need to, to, to announce it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, they got they got music playing in the background, like because of course he's guilty. I just right? love that that his face to his lawyer, like yo, really, like yeah, <laughs> yo, you going to big boy jail? And that's like the only time when we see his like his family, like in that shot. Yeah, because mm-hmm. okay. even his mom has to sit there and watch her son throw his life away. Yeah, and some old mystic's husband is like, mm, I get to go home to misty night. I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, Good luck. Good luck with the Downton Abbey, buddy. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> uh, 
Um, then we get a shot of the two families looking at each other, Steve's family and the victim's family. I'm just, I'm heartbroken, you know? Yeah. And, um, they, uh, they ask him, they, they read Steve's verdict, uh, not guilty. And, um, yeah, I wasn't sure at the end, you know, I really wasn't like, I, I wasn't sure where they were going to go. I, I wasn't sure. I'll say it. I'll say it. I couldn't take the suspense, so I looked it up because I was too, I was too nervous. I, I Yo, couldn't. You couldn't wait two minutes? She was like, no, nah, no, nah, fuck that. No, 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 no. I looked it up, like, I think maybe 20, 30 minutes in when I was like, yeah, I can't I can't do this anymore. Damn, you can't. Yo, <laughs> it's an hour. I need, I need to know if this is going to have a happy ending. Yes. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to make it through. Like, what yeah, would have happened if it was like, yeah, they found him guilty? You oh, I, then I would be like, "Damn, yo, that sucks." I would just sort of, I don't know, like, "Oh, I can't make it on the show tonight." Yeah, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I won't be sad. <laughs> All right, so look, um, uh, they they read the not guilty verdict. Uh, in the film, uh, you know, we see, um, everybody's happy, and they stand up. Steve turns to Maureen, his lawyer, his lawyer uh, uh, extends a, extends a hand and then Steve shakes it. Right. Mm -hmm. In the book slaps her hand away. Shut up. White woman. (laughs) According to the book, uh, Steve moves in to hug uh, O'Brien, the lawyer. And she turns away, leaving Steve to question why Uh, at the very end of the novel, uh, it takes place five af- five months after Steve has been cleared of all charges and released from jail. Uh, Steve has continued filmmaking, but his father has moved away, creating a noticeable distance between the two. He is confused. He is still confused as to Miss O'Brien's demeanor at the end of the trial, wondering whether she saw some real Steve or if she saw a monster. Mm. Mm. So did she? And I think that would have been interesting to put in the, in the, in the film, right. To Mm -hmm. like, like, did she just do her job effectively enough and she still thinks he did it right? or did she, does she really believe him in the film? She clearly believes him. Right. Right. Like it's, there's no question about it, but that little bit of ambiguity um, from a, white woman defending a black man uh yet still having that like mm. oh, but I'm, uh, I'm black lives matter but I'm not going to let you in the gym right exactly yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly you know what I mean uh I think that would have been interesting but um and, you, uh, but you know we we get a we get a more definitive happy ending do you th- would you have preferred that ending I think it leads I think that ending leads to more com- uh, conversation yeah yeah it um, does I it does agree. It does. But, uh, I, I I could see the argument though that it makes it. It suddenly makes a story about her, in the right. end. I could see, I could see that argument, right? Um, I think that's kind of a. I think that's a, a lame argument. No, I, I'm I'm not disagreeing. It's not a lame argument. I'm just saying I could see that being someone's argument about it, like pulling focus from him. Though it has a lot. To, obviously, it has everything to do with him as well. Um, I don't know if I would prefer that ending or not. Um, I like I like the ending that we got because I like the idea that actually the other guys, Bobo and King, were right and wrong, and in um, Sam, um, excuse me, um, Steve is right and wrong. Right. He says that he did not give a signal that, you know, he was just just walking out. But at the same time, like he's it, the interpretation of what happens is different from their perspective, which ties into what the teacher said earlier. So, yes, he walks out and he doesn't give them a signal from his perspective, from their perspective. They're like hand signal. Boom. That's it. Let's rock and rock and roll and go right. and do what we're going to do. That perspective is the focal point of the entire story. How do people see this black kid from a distance without knowing him? Is he a good kid? Is he an accomplished filmmaker? Is you know potential filmmaker, or is he a monster? 
right? Is he into, is he innocent or is he guilty? It's all about someone's outside perspective of this situation. And maybe in the moments they're correct, maybe they're not, right? Like that, that to me is, is the story. And I think the teacher or the teacher, I think the lawyer, that ambig, ambigu, ambiguity yeah. encapsulates what you just said. Oh, it does. It does. From, you know, but you see it instead of inferring that. Yeah. And I like the, I, I don't mind the inference as long as it's a, a show, not tell, right? It, this is a visual medium. Like you can't just be like, right. and then I also thought that maybe he wasn't innocent. Like, don't do that. Right. Like right. she shouldn't say that or something dumb. Um, it would have been an interesting ending. It would have been an interesting ending, but, um, yeah. I mean, it probably would have created a whole controversy of like, see why people don't trust us even if we're innocent. And then that becomes a spark into a, a whole different thing, which is also yeah. probably true um, in, in a lot of cases. So I, I don't know. I mean, it depends yeah. on what the filmmaker and this is written by a black woman. Maybe she was like, no, I want to give this black kid a definitive. I'm innocent. Let's move the fuck on story. Is there anything I or maybe that- she did or maybe she did. And the director was just like, no. 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 Yeah, I, I, that's also true. That's also true. Is, yeah. is there any that they the the they give any reason why they changed? Uh IMDb doesn't have anything on the okay. movie. Uh it says that John David Washington and um and uh what's his name? Uh Kevin Harrison Jr. were also in Monster and Men or something like something like that. I I, I Yeah, they were. They were. He was yeah, he was the he was the athlete kid, I thought, and then John David Washington was a cop. Yeah. That but that's the only that's, – and that it's based off a book. That's that's the only thing IMDb has. So, okay. So just, just quickly before we get out of here. So Kelvin, Kelvin Harrison Jr., um, I, I need to watch this movie. He was in The Trial of Chicago 7. He played Fred Hampton. I don't need to watch that movie. <laughs> huh? <laughs> like, okay. Didn't that movie win an Oscar? It got no, nominated. It did not, it did not oh, win okay. anything. It got snubbed. Okay. Um, then he's also in a movie, uh, 20, uh, a 2022 movie coming out called Elvis about the, you know, the upcoming biographical drama by Baz Luhrmann. Will not see it. He's playing B.B. King. Who is this? Is he, does he have the same age as Michael Fassbender? Don't do that. No, does he have the same age as Chadwick Boseman? Right. Like, you just yeah. play every famous black person? Like, he doesn't look anything yeah, like exactly. BB like Thurgood Marshall? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I never saw that. So. I, I saw that movie. It's not bad. I saw it. Did it's not bad. review it? No, we didn't review it. I would not have watched that movie if we didn't review it. Okay. <laughs> Do a search. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, BB King is a wild. That That's a wild choice. Okay. I need to see it. I, I need to see what young BB King looks like because I don't see it. Like, good for this young man. Look, I think this kid. I I think this guy's a is a good actor. Oh, he was in Waves with. Um, yeah, he was like the main actor. For that. No, I haven't seen. It. I heard that was good. He's gonna. He was. He's gonna be. Oh, he was in a movie with Tracy Ellis Ross. Why did I watch that movie? He was in the <laughs> photograph. Who was he in the photograph? Look at this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> That's the version of the movie he was in. Uh, Andy Morrison in the photograph. I don't know. Uh, who that look, was. whatever. He's he's uh he's he's very good. Uh, yeah, like he's a good act. I, uh, he's into the Badlands. Okay, underground. Yeah. Are we just gonna end the show by just randomly reading off? Yes. IMDb? Yeah. I'm looking at his Instagram. All right, relax. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. All right, I think we can officially leave. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he put up some muscle too. All right, yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Twenty-seven years old. I am. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, we were looking at boobs before the show started. Aren't you anyway, thirty. No, I'm not. You're not thirty. No, You're twenty-nine. Twenty-eight. I'm, 20, I'm twenty-nine. Yeah, leave that young man alone. He's too young. He's he too he young was, for you. He was born in 1994. I was born in 1991. That is. Mm-hmm. 
It's it's your young feet. Yeah, you rob the cradle. You rob the cradle. No, I'm not. Robbing it. Robbing it. I was saying, like, I got something he can rob. All right, relax, relax, (laughs) relax. All right, we got to go. This is very odd being on the other side of these. (laughs) Yeah, I don't like it at all. (laughs) This is unacceptable behavior. We will, we will not have this. Th- this is how we get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> it took these, it took all the dirtbag shit we've said over the years. She said some shit about that. And it was like this show is unacceptable. We, a one star review over this. Really? Whoa, 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 whoa! A woman making a courage. Un- okay, we got to shut this shit down. No. A woman uh, uh, showing uh, sexuality. Nope, not on my, watch. not on my watch exactly. <laughs> Get out of here. All right. That's it for us. This is episode 199 for Monster. Uh, again, you can check it out on Netflix. Um, I think we would all recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a good watch. Um, and we will see you guys uh, back for a preview episode for episode 200. And we have our movie. Milestone Yay. episode. Look how, look at Micah. Look how happy he is. Look at the left side of the screen. <laughs> look at his face. Zoom in. <laughs> The, yes. We have we have our movie for a t- for the milestone yeah two hundredth episode. You never get. <laughs> I couldn't be happier about it. I couldn't be happier about it. I couldn't be happy. <laughs> All right, I, I get the fuck. All right, later, guys. Yeah. Jesus. You're watching the Black on Black Cinema YouTube channel. Make sure you check out our full reviews of black movies, past and present. And every other week we do a preview episode where we talk about a random topic that affects the black community.